program Shalom Shalom Amen. with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Pelser. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. And today we're continuing with our discipleship series. This is part two. And this part of the series is going to teach you how to abide, how to know and follow the Father and the Son in the power of the resurrection. And that is, this is a lifelong pursuit, a Amen. lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Father, we just praise you, Lord, and we just ask the Holy Spirit to take control of this program. Because we want to know you, Lord, and we want to follow you in the power of the resurrection. We want to be obedient. We want to fulfill our callings. And we want to inherit eternal life. Father, by abiding in Jesus, by walking in faith through grace. And, and we just thank you, Lord, that you are with us and you never forsake us. Amen. And, Lord, we just thank you for all your blessings. And, Father, today we open our hearts to learn how to walk as your true disciples in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, we love you and shalom. And, um, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you yes. and give you his peace. I just speak peace to your mind, to everything you're going through. Shalom. And now, Lord, teach us. Holy Spirit, take over in Jesus' name. You know, I'm really excited. Discipleship, you know, it, it, it's not I get it saved. Thank you, Jesus. And then I go out and live my life in the world. This is a lifelong discipleship, which Paul and others are going to describe to us, of getting to know the Lord more and more and more getting to know him, and this is essential for us all the days of our life until the end, that we abide in the Lord and we continue to pursue knowing him. It's, it's beautiful, actually, because I'll tell you, the more I read the word and the more I pray and the more I walk with the Lord, the more the Holy Spirit uncovers layers after layers of beautiful pearls in the word of God, treasures, I consider them true treasures, to show me who my Father is, who the Son is, and how the Spirit were to walk with Him. And, and there's so much that God wants to give us of His love and of the knowledge of Him. He really wants to share it. That's why the seven spirits include understanding and knowledge and wisdom. And that understanding, knowledge, and wisdom is to be first and foremost of who our Lord is. And it's really the essential tenet of our salvation. So if we ever get disconnected, as we're seeing in scriptures, it's dangerous, and it's our, the number one goal of the devil is always to disconnect us from the Lord. All right, so let's, let's go to John 17, verse 3. This is really essential that we understand this. It says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Wow. It, 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 we have to stop there. If this is eternal life, and we're to work out, our, uh, work out our salvation with fear and trembling all the days of our life, and we're to walk with the Lord all the days of our life and follow him, then it's really important we understand this principle is an eternal principle. This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So we need to know them. Jesus made this really clear when he gave the parable and he gave the example of many will say, Ah, oh, Lord, at the end in the judgment, didn't I prophesy in your name? These are people in the church, by the way. Lord, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I heal in your name? Didn't I do this and that in your name? And the Lord says, Depart from me, for I never knew you. So, believe me, this is reciprocal. The word says, as we draw near to God, he draws near to us. So, this is a lifelong pursuit and to Mary, in the story of Martha and Mary, Jesus made it very clear. Martha was running around in the world wanting to prepare the meal for Jesus and the disciples. And God mad at Mary and said, listen, Lord, tell her to help me prepare the meal. And Jesus said, Mary, Martha, Martha, you worry about so many things, but only one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that. And Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet listening to the rabbi's teaching. 
there it is. Only one thing is needed. And this is true. Mary was already saved. Oh, but she hungered to know the Lord. Oh, Father, that you'll place that hunger in all of us to pursue you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength all the days of our life, Father. I ask you to fill us with that deep, deep zeal and desire in us and a hunger in Jesus' name. All right. So that was verse 3. Now, listen to the progression as, as Jesus is actually praying for disciples and all believers. Listen to the progression here on verse 8. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. And I want to actually go back to verse 6 too. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. Hmm. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. All right, now let's go to verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. We've got to get these truths in our heart. We're not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. That's why we pray that in the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Deliver us from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And listen to this. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. This is really the essential essence of what we need to know. We need to always pursue knowing the Lord. And we need to understand that we die to our old self, including we die to the world and the desires of the world. And then all things are made new, and our new desires are given to us by the Holy Spirit. And those new desires match with the fruit of the Spirit and the living waters which come out of us. All things are made new. The old has passed away, and all things are made new. We're a new creation in Christ. And we're not of the world. We're going to see this. This incredible conflict of the devil wanting to always drag us back into the world. But true discipleship is always to go back to the Lord and abide in him. And understand, we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and we're not citizens of this world. And the world's going to hate us, and we're to hate the desires of the world that we used to love, like the lust of the eyes, lying, deceiving, pride, all those things. Envy, jealousy, whatever we were practicing, those are all to die. Huh. All right. First Chronicles 28.9. This scripture is quite remarkable as... We're going to see because it gives us the essence of a lot of this teaching. I love this. <clears throat> um, this is David talking to his son, uh, Solomon. And I love what he says to him. This is what really the father says to all of us. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, being God, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Uh, okay, so I know that's... Oof, but... I think it's good that we have the fear of God because the word says to work out our salvation with fear, being the fear of God, who can cast us into hell. Jesus said that. Don't fear man, don't fear anything. But fear me because I have the power to cast your soul and spirit into hell and body into hell. Well, it's important that we understand this is a lifelong pursuit to know the Lord. Solomon makes that... I mean, David makes that very clear to his son Solomon. You know that we would write that, Lord, write that onto our minds and our hearts and keep that truth always in us. And Holy Spirit, always remind us of this truth in Jesus' name. All right, Proverbs 8.35. And you know what I like? It says that to serve him with a willing, voluntary heart. Yeah, yeah. So he looks at your attitude as you serve him right and as you live in him 
Hallelujah. Wow. Yeah. And that's why the word of God is living and active. That's why we read the word of God, because it judges the thoughts and intentions of our heart, Hebrews 4.12. And God uses that to uncover anything that is not lined up with these truths that we're reading today. As far as the desires of our heart, oh, Father, uncover any desires of our heart that are not pure and are not you being first in the name of Jesus Christ. And we crucify any other desires that are not of you. We break covenant with them. And we cast them away from us as far as the east is from the west. We crucify them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask you now to just awaken the true desires that are pleasing to you in accordance with your perfect will in Jesus' name. You know, when we pray these kind of prayers, I'm telling you, these are the prayers that change my life all the time. Because God wants us to pursue these things from him. And in the grace of God, the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit pours all this into us that we ask for. Why? Because we're asking to walk in his perfect will. And he says he must answer those prayers. All right. Proverbs 8.35. For whoever finds me, this is the Lord speaking, finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Mm. Whoever finds me finds life. Let me tell you something. This is not just an intellectual knowledge that Jesus Christ died on the cross. We need to find him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, huh, when you come and pray to me, I will answer you because you're going to, when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. So we need to seek him all the days of our life with all of our heart. This is really the essence of discipleship. Because I'm going to tell you, the more time, this is really simple, the more time Mary sat at Jesus' feet, you've got to see this, the more she became like him and knew him and wanted to please him and knew what pleased him. We're transformed in his presence. That's why the word says, I forgot about that, Marisol, we're changed from glory to glory as we look upon his face, as we stay in his presence, as we stay in his word, we're transformed. I'm telling you, this transformation is a million times more effective and faster than us doing anything else. And you know, in verse 32, it says, Blessed is the man who guards his ways in the ways of the Lord, and blessed is the man who listens to him. Because they will, and then, it, and then not only will they find life, but also wisdom and favor with God. Yeah, think about it again. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. She heard him. And Jesus promises, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. But if you're not running to him all the time, he says, come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Well, if you're not running to him and abiding in him, because he says, if you don't abide in the vine, you can do nothing for the kingdom of God. And he is the vine. I must abide in him, rest in him, seek him, spend time with him. This is... More important, I believe, than really anything else. Even our sanctification is accelerated because we're in his holy presence. Just read Isaiah 6. You will understand what it means to come before God's holy presence. How all of our sins become horrible, lit up by the light of his glory and his holiness. And then we see the horror of our sins against a holy God. And then we truly repent. Break covenant with him. Crucify that flesh. And then walk by the Spirit with him. Because you can't come into his holy presence and not know the need for repentance. That's a word for some of you who are trying to get areas of sin that you've been practicing out of your life. Spend time in the word and with the Lord. Read Isaiah chapter 6. All right. Jeremiah 29 13, we just said that, so let's go to Jeremiah 9, 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his own wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his own might. Nor let the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, 
that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. We have to understand that if we can't, we're, we're not part of the world anymore. We can't think that I'm a smart one or I'm a good speaker, so I'm going to become a pastor because I'm a good speaker. No, if it's not by the anointing of God, by the gift of teaching or pastorship, it's not going to be effective at all. It doesn't matter how charismatic you are in speaking. And I don't mean that by the fruit of the Spirit. I mean just you're charismatic. It doesn't matter. Everything comes through the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke on those when they hear the living word of God. And the word must be proclaimed with the anointing to be effective. So it say says, something? yeah, uh-huh. If you want to be anointed, go to the source of the anointing. Yes, which is? The Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Holy Ghost to know and to follow Jesus in the power of the resurrection. Yeah, the name for Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, actually means mm -hmm. the anointed the one. one. The Mashiach, the Messiah or the anointed one, that's what it actually means. And so we go to the source. This is what we're talking about today. Always go to the source. All right. So... The Lord's saying that we understand and know him. And by the way, so then when I get before the judgment, he doesn't say, I never knew you. Oh, can you imagine how horrible that would be? If I did miracles, signs, wonders, prophesied in his name. But I did it in my own. I didn't abide in him. I didn't know him. I didn't pursue him all my life. This is essential discipleship. All right. <clears throat> John 5, 44. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Hmm. Again, it, it is so easy, I, I can't even overstate this, that the Lord knows and that our only thing we need is Him, right? And everything comes from it. It says all gifts, good gifts come from above. Well, if all good gifts come from above, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the Lord. But if I want my gifts from another man, or I pursue another man, or I honor another man, and that man wants that honor and glory, that's not the kingdom of God, seeking honor from one another. That's the devil trying to destroy us with what is called pride. And by the way, it's not faith. Here's the reason. Faith Hebrews 11.1 1 is in the unseen. And God gives us that measure of faith. It's a gift of God. It is supernatural. But if I only can have faith in what I see in a man and I follow that man, I am in trouble because that's who I will give honor to and glory. And by the way, what happens when that man falls? You know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Our Lord never fell, and he never will fall. He's perfect. And you know, Dexter, the Lord looks at the motives of our heart. Are we moved with compassion and mercy? Are we serving people and serving the Lord because we love him? Yes. Or because we want or to we be want to famous? Receive glory. Glory? Yeah. And we want to be famous. But the, the, and this is what... Marisol's also saying, if we abide in Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, you'll be clothed with humility. I want you to get that. That's actually the mantle I asked for as a prodigal son because of my pride. I knew my pride and the lust of my eyes were both issues. And I said, Lord, I need to be protected in these areas. What can I ask for? And he said, ask to be clothed with humility. And he gave me a mantle of humility as God is my witness. And others, without even being told, have seen the mantle. 
You know what I ask, Lord? That only the name of Jesus be glorified all the days of my life. Because I realize he paid the price for everything on the cross. Everything. And then he went up to heaven and now he brings forth all the gifts, including the gift of the Holy Spirit, which he sends upon us. Jesus did it all. And Lord, I ask, if there's any out there that right now are being struck in the heart, that they know pride is an issue in their life or pursuing honor from man, then I ask, Lord, that you would clothe them with humility also, Father, and humble us, Father, and keep us humble all the days of our life. I don't care what you have to do, Lord. You say that you humble the proud. We're asking of our own free will always to keep us humble, humble us, discipline us, refine us, whatever you need to do, so that we walk in humility and you receive all the honor, praise, and glory. And that our life is dedicated unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And you know what the Lord told me? I asked, why, why you gave me this gift? I'm astonished, Lord, that you gave me a mental humility. He said, you asked for it to walk in my perfect will. And if you ask in my perfect will, then the answer is yes and amen. The word says that. If we ask and we ask in his will, the answer is yes. Think about that in any area that you're struggling in. That's why I, just another word for some of you, the spirit just came on me. I have the covenant of Job 31, one over my eyes. And it works as God is my witness that I will not desire any woman other than my wife and I will only honor her. That is the covenant that Job had with his eyes. And I've asked the Lord to anoint it, cover it, and guard and keep it in the name of Jesus. And I hope some of you men and women, if you need this, are praying that along with me. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to the answers to what you need in his grace so that you fulfill your calling. All the gifts and the calling are for you to fulfill it, including the things I'm talking about. This is really important. This is key to discipleship. You always can get help in your weakness from the Lord. The anointing is always there for you. Ask for it, please. Pursue it in Jesus' name. I didn't even mean to talk about that, but that's really essential. All right. As if we don't need to hear it from a man who is amazing, Paul, but let's hear this about Jesus being above all things, Philippians 3, 8. Huh. I'm going to actually start with uh, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. So he gave up everything. It is so important you read the prior scriptures. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees of the tribe of Benjamin. He was being honored. I bet you he was being lifted up, it sounds like, to be one of the chief Pharisees. He had incredible honor in the synagogue, in the church of that day, but he gave it all up for Christ, including the riches and honor and the glory he would receive from man in this, which he did even as he was putting, standing there and Stephen was being put to death. They laid the garments of Stephen at his feet as a sign of honor to him as Stephen was stoned to death. Think about that. He gave all that up. It says, Yet indeed I count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. And he had a lot to lose. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, this is one of Marisol's favorite scriptures, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings when we walk with him, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. And listen to this. This is so important. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on 
that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Wow. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, let it go, your past. Forgive those who you need to forgive. Let it go. Be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. In the new creation, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where all things are made new. Oh, I hope you're getting the Spirit all over you. To the supreme calling of Christ Jesus. And this is beautiful. This is so important for discipleship that we pursue these things. Do you know Paul went out into the wilderness for a long time? We believe it was years. So he could undo all the things of the law and learn Christ. And from all we can tell in the scriptures, he was personally discipled by the Lord and the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. Hmm. We got to... Get rid of our desires in the world, our lusts of the world, our plans we had in the world. Give them up for the Lord. That doesn't mean he's just going to take you and throw you into another country in Africa. It does not mean that. But he may at some point, like he asked us, tell us to move, ask us to move. And of our own free will, we said yes and amen to that. He gave us dreams and gave us choice to walk in his perfect will and move to California or not. Huh. And we chose his perfect will. And we moved. And we have been blessed beyond measure. And I am so thankful. And if the Lord asks for us to move again, we will move again in the name of Jesus. It is beautiful. When we walk in his perfect will, everything we need is provided. I hope you're getting that. When we go against the goads or we go against his will and try to get our own way, create our own ministry, not what he called us for. Provision, other things are lacking. But when you're in his perfect will, it doesn't matter if he has to feed you by a raven, he will. If you're short on food, glory be to God. All right. John 15. <clears throat> These scriptures are so beautiful. Lord, I ask you to write them on our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our spirits. John 15, 5. <clears throat> Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. <laughs> Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Ha! Huh. That's right. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. There's another that says if we ask, if we pray in his will, in his name, we'll get the answers to our prayers. It's amazing. If the word of God, and I'm abiding in Christ, I'm sitting at his feet, I'm abiding in him, I'm hearing his voice, I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide me and lead me because Romans 8, 13, if, by, if you are led by the Spirit, you are the sons of God. So I hear his voice, I obey, I go. Everything is beautiful. I'm abiding in the vine. When I'm spending time with the Lord, I'm going to hear his voice. When I'm ignoring the Lord and just running around in the world like a chicken with my head cut off, like Martha, God bless her soul, she was a beautiful saint, I understand that, but she got rebuked by the Lord as well as I have been, and we all do when we get caught up in the world. We are separated, taken out of the world for Christ. Let's never forget that. All right, one last scripture, <clears throat> Ephesians six seventeen. So a life of abiding in the Lord. By the way, the name of the Lord God Almighty in Revelation 9.13 of Jesus, the name of Jesus is the word of God. And the word says in John chapter 1, Jesus is the word made flesh who dwelt among us. So if I read the word of God, mm -hmm. I am getting to know my Lord. This is essential. Ephesians 6.17 says, I don't even need to turn to it, it says, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. So my sanctification, 
all the days of my life, including understanding and knowing, because those are spiritual, those are fruits of the Spirit. The, the seven spirits of the Lord include the spirit of understanding, knowledge, wisdom. So if I want to know God, I, know, I need to have the revelation of the Word of God. Spiritual truths are only spiritually discerned by the Holy Spirit by having the Spirit active every time I read the Word of God. And the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And that's what sanctifies me and changes me. And that's how I get to know who my Lord is. I get to know his character, his love for me. I get to get washed clean every time I sin and know that I need to confess my sins. Because I know James 1, chapter 7. Uh, James, I'm sorry, 1 John 1, 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, <clears throat> I ask for this hunger the zeal that yes. Paul had, <laughs> that Jesus had always to come and abide in you, even as he went to the mountain and had time with you, even as Mary sat at your feet. I ask you, Father, of my own free will, I crucify my flesh yes. and my own desires in the world. I crucify them. Any branches that are not bearing fruit or not pleasing to you, I cut them off in the spirit and in a natural in the name of Jesus. That includes relationships. And now, Lord, I ask you to fill me with the zeal and a deep desire for you, a hunger. You say, those who hunger and thirst for your kingdom and righteousness will be filled. I ask you now always to release that hunger in me and help me, Holy Spirit. Always remind me to pursue the Lord all the days of my life. Discipline me, rein me in, whatever you need to do. Convict me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. This has been your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Reverend Dexter Peltzer and myself, Dr. Marie Peltzer. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Blessings. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you.